It is deep midwinter here at the highest point of the Gargano Peninsula, the spur of Italy, at an altitude of over 1,000 meters. Whipped up by winds from the nearby Balkans that can reach 100 kilometers per hour, the snow has little chance to settle. During winter, the snow and extreme temperatures make this an inhospitable habitat. Under the blanket of snow, this lone fox may have heard the rustling of some careless vole, rigid with cold. Monte Calvo is a whole new environment, an extreme habitat, even though it's a typically Mediterranean mountain at a relatively low altitude. At the summit, as well as on the karst plateaus which abound at Monte Nero, snow and wind give the mountains of the Gargano an uncharacteristic feel. In winter, although these landscapes seem to offer little, they are in fact very much a reservoir of biodiversity, dominated by a caste system made up of caves, sinkholes and swallow holes. In early March, as soon as the cold begins to lose its grip and temperatures return to above freezing in the flooded sinkholes which dot the area, the ardour of the common toad is awakened. These flooded sinkholes, known locally as Coutini, are of Arab origin. Often lined with dry stone walls, they are used to water cattle and irrigate the small orchards found in the karst valleys. The common toad is the largest toad species in the Gargano National Park. After the winter spent hibernating, with the first warm rays of the sun, these amphibians are irresistibly attracted to water, giving rise to the mating frenzies that are so typical of their reproductive cycle. In the name of survival, they sometimes end up committing the most atrocious crimes. The females being much larger, they can be set upon by several males at a time, and during mating, in an attempt to transmit their genes, males often end up drowning the females. Despite the death of so many females, strings of small black beads soon adorn the aquatic plants. The toad's eggs are laid in jelly-like strings attached to the submerged vegetation, which provides protection until they are ready to hatch. Mating time has also come around for their cousins, the Italian green toad. They will have spent the whole night fighting for the right to the females of the pond, until, at daybreak, the strongest and luckiest males will get to mate. They embrace the much larger and more brightly coloured female for a few days, using the adhesive pads on their front legs. While they're attached, the males fertilize the eggs, which the females lay in long, jelly-like strands. The males who missed out continue singing, in the hope of attracting the other females in the area. Swallows use the cutina for feeding, swooping down to capture flying midges or any other insects which have fallen in the water, and after their exertions take a well-earned rest, washing and then drying their feathers on the bramble branches overhanging the pond.
predatory western green lizards. Smaller Italian wall lizards, and of course frogs and toads, share this little microcosm of water and stone. On the karst plateau on the slopes of Monte Calvo, spring is the ideal season for reptiles. On the scree slopes and the garig, a black western whipsnake slips furtively through the grass, on the lookout for lizards and small voles. It can reach a metre and a half in length, and is one of the commonest snakes on the Gargano promontory, where the subspecies is totally black. Looking like a cross between a snake and a lizard, an Italian three-toed skink slithers off through the grass in search of its small insect prey. This lizard has adapted to living in the vast Mediterranean grasslands and steppe, gradually abandoning the use of its legs, so it now moves very much like a snake. In the clay deposits which accumulate in sinkholes, a Hermann's tortoise is intent on eating soil. She's getting ready for the breeding season, enriching her diet with mineral salts and calcium carbonate, which will strengthen the shells of her eggs to help them withstand the extreme weather conditions on the plateau. The Hermann's tortoise is one of the rarest species in the Gargano National Park and is very sensitive to habitat loss and wildfires. High up on a wild pear tree, a four-lined snake moves sinuously through the branches, tasting the air with his delicate tongue in search of nestlings and eggs. It is Italy's largest snake, and also one of its most vulnerable, due to the disappearance of its habitat. The spines on the dead branches of some drought-resistant shrubs that dot the plateau, sometimes used by shepherds to make temporary fencing for their herds, are here being used by a woodchat shrike to exhibit his hunting trophies, like these crickets, before he feasts on them. During spring, the high-altitude grasslands on the slopes of Monte Calvo and the pubescent oak woodlands on the surrounding plateau form the ideal habitat for many species of insects, as well as providing magnificent blooms reminiscent of Eastern European steppes. In the dense vegetation that forms in the sinkholes, wild boars are safe to raise their litters, after a series of furious struggles to take control of the cooler and more protected areas of forest. Several herds of Podolica cattle graze among the scree, the sinkholes and the cutini. These cows belong to a breed that has adapted perfectly to arid environments and they're easy to come across gathered at watering points. As the cows drink, other species swim in these tiny oases of water amid a sea of rock and limestone. The great crested newt is Italy's largest newt. 
During the breeding season, the male has a conspicuous crest on his back and an iridescent band on his tail. After the winter hibernation, they hungrily hunt for worms, larvae and any small insects that happen to fall into the water. They will even eat the spawn of other amphibian species, like these eggs laid by the agile frog. The females are larger, their bellies spotted with orange, with no crest. As they prepare to spawn, they rub up against the submerged aquatic plants and the duckweed floating on the surface, in search of suitable supports to attach their eggs to. Another inhabitant of the Cutini is the Italian newt, smaller than the great crested, but just as voracious in its hunt for insects and larvae. At sunset, the Cutini of the Gargano look like miniature African wetlands. Millions of recently hatched midges form clouds as they skim the surface of the water, carpeted by an expanse of thread-leaved water crowfoot. Little concentric circles on the water surface may look like raindrops, but they are in fact agile frog tadpoles, gulping in some air as they prepare for their new terrestrial life. Perfectly camouflaged among the brambles and branches surrounding the cutino, a European tree frog enjoys the last rays of sunshine. Belonging to the genus Hyla, it's the only amphibian in Europe that climbs trees. With his bright green livery, he is just as colourful as his better known tropical cousins. As the early evening shadows lengthen across the Cutino, the little tree frogs abandon their solarium on the branches and dive into the water looking for a potential mate. Meanwhile, the agile frog tadpoles are looking for small algae and plant detritus to feed upon. It is night, and from the surface of the Cutino, Together with the mists caused by evaporation comes the croaking of thousands of tree frogs ready for a new breeding season. Even the dew-sprinkled grass is a good place to meet new prospects. As these two tree frogs, slowly trying to reach the water to breed, can testify. Monte Calvo and the plateau surrounding it is one of the areas with the highest number of sinkholes in Puglia and Italy. Sinkholes are cast formations created by rainwater slowly dissolving the rock 